Hello everybody and welcome back to Arizona Adventure Park. With this tiny new episode for today we are going to continue to build in our safari zone. In the last episode I built the habitat for the giant tortoises, for the algebra giant tortoises I had to say. And in this episode I'm going to prepare for yeah, for a big savanna right here in this area. So what we are going to do is, I'm, I might say I'm very into building panoramic habitats right now. So um, that is something that I also will have an episode out on Friday this week um, in German language, I have to say, where I build a panoramic habitat for the South America theme so i'm building a habitat for five different species in a panoramic kind of style where you yeah where you look into the habitat and you might think that all the animals that are in that panoramic habitat i say that quite too often i guess um uh, could could visit each other but they can't because the barriers that I built are looking very natural and um, are looking almost invisible to the visitors. So um, to make a long story short that is what I want to do here as well. What I'm going to do is I'm building a habitat for yeah, a big panoramic habitat with three single habitats that are connected to each other visually, but in fact the animals can't reach each other. So I'm going to have one habitat that we are building right now um, or in this episode, which I'm laying out right here that is going to be the habitat for our predators. At this point of the terrain work, I didn't know which animal I wanted to have in there. First, I was thinking about the African wild dog. Usually I wanted to have the African lion in here, but we have the lion already in the Cat Canyon, so that was not an option for me to have another habitat for the lions in here. So I thought about the African wild dogs and I also thought about the spotted hyenas. And yeah, right until the end of the build, I didn't know which animal I wanted to have in there. And um, yeah, in the end, I decided to have the spotted hyenas in there because the habitat looked a little bit too small for the African wild dog and the African wild dog usually wants to live with uh, a, big, uh, a bigger group of animals together. So I decided um, we are going with the hyenas. Yeah, so um, that's the one habitat that we have in the center uh, in the center area here. Um, this one on the right side, we are going to have some uh, yeah some herbivores, and on the left side as well. I don't have any clue which animal I want to have in there right now. I'm thinking of some. Yeah, some desert theme on the one side and more of a savanna theme on the other side. So maybe we, yeah, maybe we have the uh, the oryx um, on the one side and uh, something like maybe giraffe and zebras on the other side. Something like that. I'm not quite sure. Um, you can let me know in the comment section what you think about it and what you think would be best to have in both of the habitats close to the hyenas. Yeah, and I also want to have the train go through the habitat of our herbivores in the back uh, in the background. 
and maybe some kind of a bridge where it goes uh, over the gap in the background where we have this little water feature and also where uh, where the hill is or can we call it a mountain or is it is it more of a hill yeah where where the hill is i'm going to have a waterfall on the back side of this yeah and as i had a look at the whole area that we have in this safari zone i noticed that it is quite a big area that i have there and i I hope that we have enough animals in the game right now to fill the whole area because the lake is huge and um, we're not even half there where we want to be. Yeah, I also was thinking about having another huge savanna area on the other side of the lake where we started with our train station and I was thinking about a savannah uh, that includes the yeah the African elephant the African elephant and maybe some kind of antelope or uh, gazelle or something like that Yeah, and also I was thinking about having some monkeys in here, but on the other uh, hand, we still have the area at the entrance of our zoo where we built the indoor section for our lemurs and that was planned to be the monkey and uh, ape area. So I wanted to have the orangutans, uh, gorillas and chimpanzees over there maybe we can have some bonobos right there that that could be an option or even the mandrill so um i think i think at least we would have one monkey species in the safari zone i think that might be possible yeah, what you are going to see a lot in this episode is uh, some terrain work and decorating, putting down rocks and plants and stuff like that. And I might say I'm very, very happy how the whole um, habitat for the hyenas turned out. It looks very natural and uh, I'm very happy with it. And I also have so much fun with building this uh, this little panorama sections in uh, in my zoos right now. I'm also thinking about doing something like that in uh, Swamp Lake Zoo in the German series as well, because I'm pretty much into that. And I also thought about having something like. Uh, yeah, like a heavily themed zoo, something like uh, Disney's animal kingdom or something like that that would be so cool and um, yeah maybe that's something that I'm going to do uh, in the future yeah, and also dunes of hope is still on pause because I still don't feel where I want to go with the whole thing and uh, to be to be pretty honest with you, um, right now the whole theme of the zoo feels very much depressing to me, um, and um, I am uh, not mentally not in a uh, in the right place at the moment where I can deal with this depressing feeling. So um, I have to keep it on pause uh, for at least. Uh, some more weeks I guess and maybe I'll go back into it um, after that time but I just I just don't know right now and I hope you guys don't mind um, yeah as you might have noticed as well the the focus or uh, the most of the things that I have on my channel right now are in German language um, 
that doesn't mean that I don't care about my English uh, viewers anymore. I really do, but um, yeah, sometimes I have to make choices in what to do or in what direction I want to go. So the baking thing uh, for sure had to be in German language because it would be too hard for me to uh, to translate the whole recipes and things in uh, in German. And also the measurements when I do this for my American viewers. Uh, would have been difficult for me to translate that into uh, yeah into cups and tablespoons and teaspoons and uh, whatsoever so yeah so it was the obvious choice for me to do those videos in German language and then um, a swamp lake for sure was in German language all the time and also um, my prehistoric kingdom videos are in German language because I was thinking about um, I didn't want to have another series of prehistoric kingdom in English language because there are already so many people that are building in there and uh, doing stuff with it I didn't want to be the next one doing this when there are almost um, no or just a few German YouTubers that um, are making videos of prehistoric kingdom. So yeah, that as well was an obvious choice for me. But I will be going back into some English stuff as well in the future. I might do some more classrooms in the future where I do some more t uh, tutorials and teach you guys some things. And um, I also think about doing a little franchise series on uh, in English language. And um, if there is something you have any ideas for or something you want to see in Planet Zoo or even in Prehistoric Kingdom, just let me know and uh, I'll be happy to, to do whatever I can to make that happen. Yeah, but back to the game and back where I am going right now or what I'm doing right here. As I said, you see a lot of planting and um, a lot of rocks going on in here. Um, you might have seen some videos of me uh, doing tutorials about how, uh, how you create natural looking habitats or realistic looking habitats, interesting habitats I might say as well. Always look that you have some elevation in your habitats. That is key to an interesting looking habitat and also take care of the shape of the habitat. Don't make it just uh, square or round or something like that. Um, you can also do that and it could look very interesting. But make it look a little bit more interesting. Give it, give it some more shape. Yeah, elevation is key. Also rocks and color the terrain. Give it a little bit color, use the grass uh, brush, the rock brush, use some dirt and something and make it look a little bit different. And when you use the rock brush, also use rocks and put them in there. That looks so much better. Um, put down some water features and cover those with, uh, with rocks on the sides. Um, but not the whole, uh, but not the whole part around it, because the animals want to enter the water as well and might want to have a drink in there. Yeah, elevation, as I said, and do stuff with plants. Use a lot of the plants. Um, use the big trees in the background of the habitat. Um, try to leave the center of the habitat open so that your visitors can see the animals. And use a lot of shrubbery, bushes, grasses, uh, flowers and so on. And uh, yeah, do a lot with it. Yeah, and if you if you follow these little rules, it is so easy for you to make a nice looking and interesting habitat. 
yeah just some more animal enrichment i um animal enrichment is a good point i am thinking of doing a classroom how you can use animal enrichment in your habitats and um, still make it look natural so you can cover up some of these things uh, quite nicely and um, yeah integrate it a little bit more in your zoo builds and i'm i think about making a video about it and show you how you can do this Yeah, I'm almost finished with the habitat for the hyenas right there. I had a little bit of an issue here when the keeper yeah, introduced the animals to the habitat because they immediately were boxed once again and the box was stuck and uh, I had to make a little bit of a change in here with the rocks and um, move them a little bit um, more back so that the animals actually could leave their boxes. Yeah, and in the end it all worked out. Our hyenas are in the habitat. The habitat is bigger than I thought, so they are quite happy and I am as well. And here you can already see when you look around the habitat, it looks like the hyenas could use the whole terrain. You don't see the, uh, the barriers in the background. You don't see the dry mold or the, the water mold that I have uh, there from the visitors uh, view and um, yeah that is something that I wanted to achieve so that you have the illusion that the hyenas could go anywhere and could hunt the other animals yeah with that being said we're at the end of our video the hyenas are in there um, in the next episode we are going to take care of one of the other two habitats as well make some decoration on the outside for our visitors and I hope you guys liked the video, even if it was a short one. Just leave it a like if you did so. Leave, a, yeah, subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss the next episode. And I'm more than happy to see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.